So I've just, I've just had another little insight um, about this whole right to petition thing, although it's not much of an extra insight, but it's worth, a little thing worth mentioning, is that for Henry Pollockson, who himself, he was only in position for about two years, um, although this really, really significant and important event, this glorious revolution with William III. So there, there is an act in 1700 um, which clarifies privileges, okay? Um, need to find the act. I haven't found it yet. Um, and that, that act, I think there was... There was actually earlier ones. There was one from the 1600s as well. Um, so they had privileges acts, which I didn't know about all the way through that. It's interesting that um, it doesn't use the word privileges in the Bill of Rights. I don't know exactly who's responsible for the Bill of Rights, but we know that um, <coughs> William Penn's case and various other cases, a lot of these cases from the archives, the actual petition archives um, of the House of Lords, a lot of them all seem to be contributive um, towards the instances and things that happened. So, but what, what, um, with Pollock's offence, on his Wikipedia page, um, so his, his actual title. The, the titles, I think the title's quite important for Pollockson because what the title actually is, is Lord Chief Justice of the Common Pleas, right? But he's not Lord Pollockson. He isn't like Baron Pollockson or even Lord Pollockson. His title is Sir Henry Pollockson, right? Now... With him being the Lord Chief Justice, I mean, there were various positions like Lord Lieutenant and, 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 and other positions like... Um, there are various positions in government which carry the word Lord, but you might not be a Baron or Lord. It's just the title is a Lord, like a Lord Lieutenant or various other um, titles, which is only for the period you've got that position, but you're not actually a Baron or Lord. Um, there are positions like that. And the thing about this, he's only Sir Henry Pollockson, right? But he is the Chief Justice. Now, I don't know whether he's part of the... He, he probably would have been on the Privy Council, um, but I don't know whether he's a member of the House of Lords or not officially, but what's interesting to note here, right, is that so. The title, Chief Justice of the Common Pleas. So he's Chief Justice of Common Pleas, right? Now, Westminster Hall, which is, you know, part of Parliament, but Westminster Hall is where they had all the um, judicial matters, the Court of Parliament, basically. But I don't think that that, <clears throat> is the bat that is from what I've gathered from all the petitions? I don't think that is the bar of Parliament. I don't think it is the bar of the Commons or the bar of the House of Lords. It's just Westminster Hall, um, Court of Common Pleas, and the King's Bench as well was in Westminster Hall. Westminster Hall is quite massive. From what I read, part of Westminster Hall was the King's Bench Court. And they had a marble throne where the king would sit, right? Obviously, it's the king's court, the king's bench. That's the whole point of it. Well, I don't know if he always sat it. Obviously, if he's away at sea or whatever, someone else would. But this is the thing. So if you've got Westminster Hall, right? And if you've got a marble throne for the king when he sits at the king's bench... But then also in Westminster Hall, you've got this um, plea side. Now, if Pollockson is the Lord Chief Justice of Common Pleas, then he's the top judge of Common Pleas, but not King's Bench. Now, Common Pleas was meant to be like civil court, funnily enough, not um, 
felony, right? The common pleas was meant to be like um, taught, you know, civil disputes between two parties, right? And the king's bench, right, is matters between, you know, the citizen and the crown. Or even things like, you know, all these um, retainers and um, attainers. And there is some other complex um, procedures and so forth under the government, right? But, but also crimes, you know, crimes against the king, the king's laws. Although it's, you know, it's usually crimes against a citizen, but, but it's the king's laws, right? Uh, Offences and felonies, basically, right? But the bar of parliament, they have a bar of parliament in parliament. Now, this is the thing in the 1688 Bill of Rights. You know, illegal prosecutions by the king's bench from matters cognizable debatable only in parliament so that that that's the bar of parliament you've got the bar of parliament right but then you've got westminster hall okay so now the thing is if you're putting a petition to parliament a, a, any matter a, any any petition to parliament or any matter with parliament is to the bar of parliament that's for sure like you know the petitions bar hanging on the speaker's chair or the, or the house of lords that is a bar, right? Those matters and concerns, okay? Now, it says, for illegal prosecutions, Article 9 in the Bill of Rights, it says illegal prosecutions by the king's bench, that's the, the criminal, you know, offences against the state, right? Uh, and, and the king's law, right? Illegal prosecutions for matters decidable debate will in Parliament. Well, if you've taken a matter to Parliament then that that cause is is to that bar okay i think i think that's that that that's basically it right see so illegal prosecutions by the king's bench so you can't be prosecuted for offenses crimes criminal offenses against the state well, why would you be prosecuted against, um, you know, um, crimes against the state? Well, <laughs> if you broke them, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, the, it, it, it will, you know, why, why they be trying to do it? You know, prosecution is to, 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 to try someone for a crime. You know, if it wasn't anything to do with trying someone for a crime, why would it say, why would it mention it? Right. But interestingly, right. In the 1689 Claim of Right Act, it says that, you know, you're liable for civil actions. So this is actually Pollock, Pollock's Fen, because he's the Chief Justice of Common Pleas, which that, that's the other side of Westminster Hall. you got the Court of Common Pleas, which is taught, right? So it doesn't say that, you know, it's illegal to be prosecuted in Westminster, or, or illegal, to, I mean, sorry, illegal to, to have a, 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 a case. So, on that basis, if you, you, you wouldn't, if you had a case to the Bar of Parliament, the House of Lords or Commons, right, you're pursuing that cause, just like uh, a police officer pursues criminals, right? And that's the matter at that bar. Um, but it's not it's not local crime, is it? You know, it, it's a matter of church, state, or law. See, so, so you wouldn't be prosecuted at the king's bench. It would be illegal to be criminally prosecuted. Um, you know, because you, 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 it's a matter to, that, to the bar of parliament, right? But it doesn't say that you cannot be um, subject to um, civil, which is common pleas. So you would actually be in front of Pollocksfern. You could potentially be at Westminster in in front of um, Pollocksfern for, for a, a talk case, right? Which is common pleas. That's, that's what it was. Doesn't say that common, doesn't say that, um, um, you know, um, being in front of the common pleas is illegal. It says the King's Bench, which was another part of Westminster Hall, for, for like I said, you know, in front of the King. So you wouldn't actually be in front of the, this is the thing, um... The bar, so the bar of Parliament, right, is a cause to Parliament. 
illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench from as cognizable debate will learn by Parliament. Well, if you petition in Parliament, like in the 1661 Act, um, you know, any addresses, remonstrations, petitions or causes um, to either of Houses of Parliament or the King, right? So that, so, so that would be both bars of Parliament, illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench, if you've got a matter to our Houses of Parliament. So that, that actually comes under Article 9, um, illegal prosecutions, right? And it fits it perfectly because um, if you've got a cause to the bar of Parliament, you know, you can't be prosecuted by um, the King's Bench. Now, the other article that says it's the right of the subject to petition the King... Right, and all prosecutions for doing so are illegal. Well, the thing is, um, if there was a if there was a criminal case, right, um, if the king is to deal with you know offences against the crown, right, d does that actually mean um, all the way up? Does it actually mean? All of the king's courts, anyone bringing any kind of case, you know, whether it's um, the police themselves, you know, um, in, in local jurisdictions, you know, this is a king's court. Now, some people might think that, oh, it's got to be a petition to the king, but it's the king's bench, isn't it? It's the king's bench. That's the, that's the highest level of the criminal court, the king's bench, Right. Now the thing is, you might think, well, that's strange because you know the king had a king, the king's the, in Westminster Hall. You got the king's bench with a marble throne where he sat on, and then inside Westminster Hall as well, you've got the common pleas, Pollockson, right, which is civil cases. So you've got to, you, you've got the the, the 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 chief justice of common pleas and the king in Westminster doing two separate kinds of running two separate kinds of cases. But then you've got Parliament, remember, you've got the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And you've also got the King in the um, House of Lords, because that's where the throne is, for Eng the throne of England, right? So that that's the irony, because you've got... The King's got uh, King's Bench with his marble throne in Westminster Hall, but he's also got, you know, um, you know, the House of Lords when he's in the House of Lords. Although they have a, the House of Lords has a speaker as well, you know, like the, the Commons has a speaker, but then the, the King's in there also. But you might say, well, what about, you know, Westminster, um, Westminster Palace, right? And so forth. Well, apparently anyone can approach or petition the king any time anyway, including, you know, there's also the Privy Council. But the thing is, it, if you read, like, all through the 1600s leading up to the Civil War, they had the Star Chamber and so forth and the Court of High Commission. Now, those were courts that the king could call or assemble at will, right? It didn't necessarily have, like, Westminster Hall or the Bar of Parliament or anything well, they had that star chamber. There was a painted chamber as well, which was another. The painted chamber wasn't um, the bar, it wasn't Westminster Hall. It was just another place where they had committees, or but they they did sometimes have um, you know um, judgments made in there and so forth. The, the king could call his court of high commission wherever he wanted. Sometimes they had it in York. Um, so. The, the various courts that the king could have with his own authority and power at will, and also when he's travelling around, because, you know, like, the, you know, this is going back a bit further now than, you know, 1600s. This is going like back into the 15 and 14 and 1300s. But this is what when the king is going around the country or going around his business, the kingdom or whatever, or you know, um, he, he can just, you know, have a court. Because sometimes they didn't even have actually courts anyway for normal proceedings. They just were held in certain houses or whatever, you know. This is a little bit more like, you know, um, on Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, you know, when um, the king comes back, you know, um, at the end and so forth. You know, he's just wherever he is, you know, with his people around him. You know, he can just almost like knighting people, you know, he, he can... He could knight people on the spot. He didn't have to be at a certain place in a certain ceremony like now they do it. He could just be, you know, um, if the king is in France or in, you know, Jerusalem or wherever, if he's just 
traveling you know if he's in a war i mean he might just you know knight someone on the spot there and then for example um because that, that he's got the power to do that um now the question is you know the justice when the justices are doing their circuits for the assizes and the quarter sessions that is not the local magistrates or the hundred divisional court which is what our peers are in which where we have protection from judgment of our peers if we are the one pursuing the cause or raising the cause at least while you're pursuing it right um and particularly when you're doing it to the bar of parliament because it's not going to be judged by it, it, it the matter that you're if you're chasing a criminal right and you know you have to rubber tackle him and you know is that going too far or not or you know did you you know th that is matters for that at the bar where you'll be where you're pursuing that matter so to say so it's not at the bar of the hundreds court or the local divisional court um it's a little it, it, in a way it, it's kind of um it, you know you see the, the the magna carta um privileges for the peers the, the Charter of Liberty said that they, they had to stand for their trials like anyone else. So after between 1100 and 1215, that's only 115 years. So you've got 115 years of barons uh, and lords after the conquest, you know, um, being tried, at least from 1100, um in the divisional courts in front of, you know, juries and normal people with even, like, you know, justices of the peace. And I think that they thought they were getting um, tried unfairly by common people, basically. So that's why the barons made Magna Carta. It, it actually made it so they could only be tried by their equals. So, so they wouldn't really be tried in the divisional courts. Um, I think that if I'm... And I need to do a lot more reading in history on this, but it, it, it's looking at the moment to me like th they would be tried at the assizes or quarter sessions only, not at these um, divisional courts, because usually the, although not always, but most of the time at these quarter sessions, remember it was only four times a year, and then the assizes were only twice a year. Um, so there's only like six six of these sessions a year and the 12 months in a year so i mean it, there's not even one for every month if it's 12 months if it's only four five six there's only it only on average i'm not saying exactly what time they were but they had them at they tied them with the christian like michael mass and um, hillary term and all these other religious um religious um festivals and, and various things they also had those later on they had those um pie powder courts as well I don't think that the lords and barons would have been tried at pie powder court either. I wouldn't have thought, but anyway, that's 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 just my speculation. You've got to check up on it. Um, what I think the the aside, so it, on on average, like you know, it's around every two months. You know, on average, um, you know, twice a, you know, um, once every two months these courts, although they probably didn't actually, you know, it's sometimes you might have been waiting longer or shorter depending on what um, time of year it was, but, but on average, it seems like there were around six, so that's you know, two months, you know every two months or so and they would have been sat by actually, peers, some of the peers were these judges, you know um basically other lords and barons and earls and so forth but there were some knights now i don't know about the knights because i don't know if 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 being sir you know like whatever sir sir um is you know about that conan Do you know um arthur conan doyle and um, he was a he was a knight sir or, or even david amber sir david amber i don't know if being knighted made you equal to the, the earls, barons or lords, or, or give you the ability to judge them, or if you are a justice of the assizes, right? I don't know if 
been an a, a, an actual you know oh, I'm a judge, but it definitely I don't think it it definitely wasn't these justices of the peace. Um, I the, the, and I, I this is you see this is actually I've realised how important this is to the whole um, peculiar affairs of Lord Hanningfield at Southwark Crown Court at the well that that's. The Central Criminal Court, the old Bay oh no, it was Southwark, wasn't it? Not the old Bailey. I was thinking of the old Bailey Central Criminal Court, but Southwark Crown Court is still a Crown Court. Now the judge was His Honour, Alistair McCreef, right? But he's he wasn't he's not a knight and he wasn't a baron or lord, but he was a justice, a judge, you know, of the circuit. Now this is the thing of the circuit judges. Only very select justices have a right to sit in the House of Lords. There are, I mean, the Lord Spiritual and so forth. But now even, even the Lady Chief Justice, who is a Baroness, right? They're not letting her vote in the House of Lords at the moment. Uh, she can't vote in there, which is it says much for the suffragettes, doesn't it? You know, um... They're saying that the, the 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 lords who are judges don't actually vote on political matters now, which I think is a bit more of a stripping down of the um, dismantling the constitution further. Um, but she is a member of the House of Lords, but she didn't vote in there, which is kind of odd, really, because it seems the whole point. Um, you know, it, it seems rather ridiculous. I, I, I think that um, Gordon Brown made a, a big cock up of the Constitution, probably as much as Tony Blair with this congestion charge in Cain Livingston, really, um, with, with their congestion charge zone and Magna Carta. Well, if that's a good example of much of a cock up they've made with Magna Carta, then just think of what they've done with this Constitution Reform Act, this, the idea of the Supreme Court. Because the, 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 there's, a, the, there's meant to be a constitutional hierarchy and basis for it all um you know so this only a, a, a small number of certain particular justices can sit in the house of lords but now they don't vote they, those justices don't actually vote in the house of lords right but so i don't know what's the point in being in there um, it's just they're in charge of the courts. So they're in charge of the courts, the members of the House of Lords, but they don't vote in there. But that's not McCreef, is it? It's not McCreef. So, but Jeremy Johnson, he um, said that, you know, he put this privileges argument for Hanningfield, say that oh, it's matters of Parliament, which is on the basis of the matter or cause was at, at the bar of Parliament, basically. Uh, but it, it says in the, according to um, Erskine May, um, according to Erskine May, fraud or forgery is a forfeit of privileges, so you can be tried for it. It's officially declared that, you know, if, if it's a fraud or forgery case or, or claim, if you've got evidence for that, it, 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 that is a breach of privilege. But they're saying that maybe Parliament decides if it's a breach of privilege or not, which is many what the Privileges Committee does, assess whether they can be prosecuted or not, because in all those old petitions, they're actually asking for permission to prosecute. So they get permission to prosecute and then they can do it, which is actually how... I would have thought that that's how Hanningfield ended up there because they didn't intervene. So I don't know if they were intervening at the last minute or not, but in, if you read it, what he wrote on his six pages, it says that, oh, there's nothing preventing, you know, that he, 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 he's dallying around, you know, there's nothing preventing it from going ahead, but it might touch him as of, you know, it, 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 that to me is pussyfooting around because um, in... Um, in the earlier ones, in the earlier petitions, which give um, a lot of details about all this, um, there was actually very proper, you know, th they, were, they were asking permissions and consents and so forth, um, which I don't know how you can waive. If something's set in law, then I don't know how you can waive it, um, you know. 
But the, the peer privilege definitely permanently protected them from the hundreds divisional courts, which is equivalent to the magistrates' court now. That's for sure. So all of the other arguments about the privileges wasn't their Magna Carta privilege that they, they never would, from what I can gather, they never would get prosecuted by the magistrates' court or equivalent to the magistrates' court. And if they did, that's why they were asking to be released all out. Um, it was done in error, only by the assizes, right? But not all of them might have been that educated, even though they've got these titles. Now, the thing is that they were arguing about privilege to do with the sessions of parliament. So, so that was a different privilege. They were actually arguing um, privilege of parliament for like MPs and members. Now, I know that because not all lords and barons actually got called to parliament. Some of them had got titles, but they weren't called to parliament. You, you can be a baron or a lord, but, but not called to, to sit and vote, which is effectively like what they're doing with the chief justice now. Um, you know, uh, if the chief justice is not voting in parliament, how, how has she got um, parliament privileges? You know, because if they're just for going about a job in the courts in in the supreme court in the um you know in the high in, in the royal courts of justice or whatever or whatever the job is it's not the bar of parliament is it um and she's not doing work for parliament she's doing work for the courts so why would she why would she have article 9 um privileges why would lady chief justice have article 9 privileges uh if she can't vote in the house of lords if she's just in, ch in charge of the courts She'd only have um, Magna Carta privileges, which is that, you know, um, you can't be prosecuted by magistrate's court, you know. Um, so th that's also something to think about. Um, so I don't really know about McCreef. I know that... Be be so, th so there's this issue to do with, um, like, forget the magistrates' courts and, and, and the, um, and and so this this middle range of courts that that are like the the, the crown court, the crown court, and I guess the high court as well. They're not barons and lords. All of there's only the, the supreme court of barons and lords. So this is the thing, you know, we don't really have um, many barons and lords doing the assizes, the equivalent of the assizes and court sessions now, which is the Crown Court. Uh, they're just justices. They're not like uh, the, the, the people of high title, uh, pe peers. Um, now, this is the thing. There were quite a lot of peers going around in the courts. A lot of them in the whole, the whole circuit. So what I've just realised now, the second actually, is that you've got entire circuits of assizes and court sessions, which are pretty much mainly lords and barons as well, um, with their the job, also some knights, right? Well, that would mean that it is not just the Lady Chief Justice, um, you know. It means most of the judges or the circuit judges would have been members of the House of Lords. So that's, um, you know, when they had a lot less of them, because now we've got, the, the, there are so many members of the House of Lords, but, but um, they, they're, they're not providing after services um, that, 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 that they used to. It seems like, that there are more and more people there doing these obscure jobs and tasks like Lord Walney, you know. Um, God knows what they're doing, pottering off to Venezuela, doing work with committees and various diplomatic... God, God knows, uh, you know, you know. there's so many of them now, like Bar in this Baroness M's yacht. We don't know what the fuck they're all up to. But what is clear is they're not up to business with us, um, which is what they're meant to have because, you know, hardly any petitions get read out and, um, you know, speak to my own because my face ain't listening. So, you know, it, 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 
if there were so many of them in there now in, in, in ridiculously large numbers, you know, you'd have thought they'd have a, you know, you, you could you call in and sit and have a cup of coffee with them. You know, it, it, it's, it, it, there are more and more of them who have got more exclusive and, you know, uh, exotic functions, which, you know, we're not privy to. <laughs> you know, which, which I don't really know what they're playing at. Um, it, it seems to be more like some kind of, you know, um, handlebar moustache club or private members club or something, which is highly fashionable if you've got a lot of money. And, you know, wh how, why was why would a Labour Party Baron or Lord Walney, sorry, be put to assess the um, rights of the subjects, you know, um, when, you know, I'd have put someone in, independent to do that when it involves the rights of the subjects. And another thing is that De uh, Baron Denham was meant to be the Whig, the guy who was really, in ch he, he was Lord Chief Justice as well. He was keen on our rights and privileges and finding out about them. But he d he doesn't really now get accredited for um, the running of Parliament. What happened is this Erskine May guy um, gets, his book gets all the credit, not all the research of um, Denman. Demon did a lot of research in our privileges and so forth, but ironically, Erskine May is the one who gets credit for all the running of Parliament now in his book, and that's the name that gets um, used, which is interesting because Denman didn't get on with the King, you know, after those um, Queen Caroline cases and so forth. And another thing that I might as well put this in now because I'm kind of like, I'm, I've gone onto that thread and I've got a flow on it. So, um, what I've also just learned is that this whole burning down of Parliament, right? So we've got Sir Robert Peel. So we've just we've got like this is eight, this is eighteen uh, early eighteen hundreds, right? We've got all the Luddites, right? And they're all kicking off. They did a big petition for minimum wage, right? So. All the Luddites are kicking off, not because of technology, like now with all these smartphones and that, because of the machines of minimum wage, right? And there were a lot less jobs available, right? Because the machines were doing all the work. So if you think, if you've got a factory full of people, right, and they're all um, doing it by hand, which is skilled work, right, and then you get a lot of machines in and you don't need as many people anymore, then there's many people going out of work and then the people who are left in work don't get as much money, right? Now, this is why they were breaking all the machines. Also, in Hansard, it says that the Lords were... I read some of the conversation of the Lords in Hansard and they're saying about, you know, the, the, the crime levels going through the roof in the urban areas, right? And they need to do something about it. Then, surprise, surprise, we've got uh, Sir Robert Peel, He's like the police, the policeman of policemen. You know, he, he's like the, 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 he's almost like the Jesus of police officers. Sir Robert Peel is almost like, you know, if you get, um, you know, um, um, Mark Rowley, it's Mark Rowley's hero, Sir Robert Peel. He's like the inventor of the police, right? So, and then you got, so you got Robert Peel. Uh, what is the answer to loads of crime? And loads of people kicking off about you know low wages and that the, the uh, there's a massive huge petition which they rejected right, and then um, Denman is defending some of these um, luddites and so forth, and some of them got hung, but not all of them got hung, and I think there was there was a final case because it was in Nottingham. Um, I think because I don't know whether they qualified for privileges or not if they're going to be breaking machines up, which is kind of a little bit like similar situation now with Extinction Rebellion um, kicking off and, and various things. But I think they ended up stopping prosecuting them, the Luddites. But what I'm saying is that the, the government and the um, you know, all the... Uh, factory workers and the barons and earls, they decided that, you know, these people, you know, that they, they, they're not going to have a minimum wage. So they're actually, if, if machines are making less jobs available and if there's no minimum wage, then you're going to have more people committing crimes, clearly, 
because you know it, it, as more machinery comes then there's less and less jobs. Uh, you have to find other jobs or go m leave the countryside where the mills are, maybe in certain um, countryside areas or, or and city. But then you know, there's more people going to where you're going to find more jobs. You know if the, um, you know, and they also got farming machinery. So you know, it, 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 it may, maybe people did move to the city to look to try find more work. Um, but there's definitely a massive upsurge in crime now. The, the resolution for this, Sir Robert Peel, also is, you know, get a police force, permanent proper met police force. So, and this is the thing. Now we're saying, why do we need all this tech and surveillance and facial recognition and seeing where everyone's going if there wasn't any crime? You wouldn't need it, would you? So they were actually, by refusing the Luddites, they actually created more.